Hey, you doing YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews back with yet another review. Um, this guy sitting next to me, his name is Joe. Um, Joe is uh, going to be making beers for a living in the future, and he does future. now. But he's going to brewery long. school. Yes. It's Joe from NEPA Beer Reviews. Infinitely more reviews than me. Um, where are you going to school? Niagara College in uh, Niagara-on-the-Lake, Ontario. Uh, I'm going into their Brewmaster and Brewery Operations Program. Um, and you can just learn the, in, the business. Just everything. Not just the business, but the business. Business. You gotta get the business, business. down. Yeah. Um, we're doing like a kind of like a last minute last review, review thing. Kind of, a, kind of a deal. Because he's gonna be heading off for a couple months. Um, I'm sure we'll pop off a couple in um, October, November, December, or whatever. But yeah. anyway, probably that first that that Monday that I come back, the twentieth. Yeah. We'll probably do some. Uh, we'll do some. Some reviews. Yeah. Something. Do something. But um, he's leaving. Um, in two days, and we pop off a couple of reviews. We did uh, Old Stock, Cellar Reserve. We did uh, Side uh, by Side, side of, of uh, Mirror Mirror. Mirror. Yeah. And um, we're going to cap this review night with uh, one of Joe's beers, which yes. I'm super excited to try out. Um, what is it, about a month, a month and a half ago? Uh, yeah, a month ago? at this point, about a month. Um, I went over to Joe's house, and he gave me the uh, Dilly Yo on brewing. I've never made beer myself, but I went over there, and they helped him out. He made a couple of beers for a wedding you're going to be doing. Yeah. Uh, a girl that I work with, um, she knows that I'm into a lot of beer and knows that I brew beer. And she's like, hey, let's do a, kind of a collaboration. Like, let's do some beers for the wedding. Like, make two beers for me. So I came up with both recipes with a lot of input and feedback from them. Um, just to kind of get what they want, and we did that day was a test batch, and it was two. It was what? What kind of beers were they? Two beers. Uh, one is a Belgian style wit beer uh, that I added apples into, and the other is just a English style brown ale, just a little bit of a maltier brown ale. Um, nothing too crazy, nothing really hoppy, nothing over the top malty. Just more of just a just more of more a of sessionable a, brown ale, widely acceptable beer. Yeah, yeah, a widely acceptable beer. If you've had if you've never had crazy beer before, you shouldn't be too turned off, too turned off by But it might be a gateway them. drug in this Yes, it stuff. could be a gateway drug. Beer is different than My end goal for goal for this is to get more people to realize that Beer is different than water. This. Yeah. H2O. Than, than water. Yeah. But uh, you, I went over there and he was making these beers. Mm -hmm. Making. We did three beers. We did three beers. He made the um, the two wedding beers. Yes. And uh, I did one of the wedding beers before you got there. The second one you got there part way through. Part way through, and then you did a ramped up version of the brown ale. Is that yes. what that was? This is what this is. This is a ramped up version of the brown ale. And initially, uh, I call my brown ale Banshee. I, I love Irish mythology. Um, just that kind of... I, I like I like mythology as it is, but I'm Irish. And, um, so you gravitate more I, yeah. towards the Irish. So part. I went for Banshee, just for no particular reason. Um, and I called the ramped up version Banshee's Cry, or like Banshee's Wail, or whatever you want to call it. Um... But you came up with a really interesting name just now. So we're sitting here, and I asked them before we were filming. I'm like, do you have a name for it? And then before he even said anything, I had this, pre uh, this thought popped in my head. And he's like, I have Banshee's Cry because they called the first one Banshee. And I figured, um, you know, you brewed two wedding beers um, that day. You might as well call it Till Death Do Us Part. And I think that's yeah, a pretty I, bad I really like name. That. For, yeah. Not just for a beer, but for a barley wine because... If you're gonna part with death, I mean, a barley wine is gonna put a crown. Yeah, that's gonna deal get you. The, seal the deal. So we're gonna review. Um, I don't know what we would call it. Joe Cali, 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 Cali. Yes. I, I I'm not sure of the subtleties of the pronunciation, yes. so I kind of mumble it all. A lot of Joe uh, As long as you're not putting in what I love to call the imaginary R. Joe Cowley? Crowley. Crowley. Joe Crowley. Crowley. Really? Yeah. I would get people angry at that too. Yeah. I call it the imaginary R. Yeah. Well, those people suck. Exactly. That's like an instant, like, you're a horrible person. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Joe Crowley's 
<laughs> till death do us part. English style barley yes, wine. Yes, English style barley wine. Uh, give me a guess on percentage. Ten six. Ten six. That's that's the guess. Uh, label wise, I always do a label thing. Actually, I did. Um, um, I'm a big label guy. Yeah. I love my labels. I'm pretty uh, partial to this label, to be perfectly honest with you. It's very uh, Freddy Krueger esque. It is. It, it looks is. like uh, there was a label on there and there was someone scratching at it. Obviously, there's no label on there. I'm just trying to be a little bit funny. But <laughs> I'm not actually being too funny because I love, like, this is, comes off as a negative. The ghetto, it, more ghetto, more ghetto it is, it is the, the, be, the, the more the I like it. You. So, this is probably pinnacle for yeah. me as far as ghetto goes. So. I'm curious as to what beer was in this before. Yeah. Do you know? Uh, that beer... It's a... This... This... I was going to say honestly, a Yards Old Bar Ah, uh, no. Mm-hmm. This might be a Lagunitas bottle. Really? Lagunitas te- tends to do this kind They're of like smaller, paper. though. This is a yeah. seven... This is 750. This isn't like mm-hmm. six and change. I think Lagunitas... Uh, do you have a bigger uh, Lagunitas uh, bottle? Uh, no, you have the... Stadium. It might be up there somewhere. Uh, I can't see. Yeah. Can't see it. Anyway, I want to say Lagunitas. Okay. That was goddamn. What are they, Detroit? Lagunitas is Michigan, right? Um, uh, California. No. Yeah, they are. They have a brewery in Chicago. No. They're originally from California. Okay. Well, they say they're from. Yeah, it's the ones that we can get around here really easily now, it's from Chicago. Well, I'll tell you right after that. I mean, this is going to be a lot of me talking. Well, no, I'm going to go back and forth, try to push Joe to talk, but this is going to be a lot of me talking about the beer, I would assume, because you talk about your own beer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In, a, in, a, in a grading so, wise, it's just yeah, kind of weird. Yeah, it's just kind of, it is weird. Um, it smells delicious from what I'm saying. I actually smell nice maltiness, a little bit of breadiness. Yeah? Mm-hmm. yeah. Look at that. That's, that's mm-hmm. nice. Joe Modest. I've though. had this, yeah. Um, I've had this once before. I've tested uh, the bottle. It has a fantastic head on it. I mean, there's not a, a huge amount of head there, but mine's retaining pretty well for what there is there. Mm-hmm. And um, with you're talking about 10, it's probably anywhere between 10 and 12. Who the, who the hell knows? For yeah, at, honestly, like, I predicted about 14. Um I started homebrewers out there will know what I'm brewers out there will know what I'm talking about. I started at one point one one zero gra- starting gravity. I ended at one point zero three zero. So you're looking at about ten. I would have liked to end a little bit lower than that, but give or, that's that's a give or take for wrongness on the hydrometer and the Refractometer and okay. all the technical mumbo jumbo. The upper end girder with the refractometer. Yeah, the, 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 that the refractometer technical. will always get you. I had many a dead nights where I had a big problem with the refractometer. Yeah, I'll tell yeah, you right now, yeah. that son of a bitch. Absolutely. Um, well, I'm gonna dive right in and see what we got here. It smells good. It smells good. It does. It smells real good. This this yeast always brings out this. Uh, Particular characteristic. I, I'm using, and that's a, and that's the thing. Like, I mean, I'm using uh, USO five dry yeast, two packets of it for this this batch. Um, and the prior batch that I did, it smells very similar. Uh, I don't know if you remember from the the previous one we did. Yeah, yeah. It smells um, like the yeastiness is weird in a way, in a good way, because usually barley wines you don't get a ton kind of yeastiness from them. I mean, they're bigger barley wines. So for this, it almost it smells like a super ramped up quad. Mm-hmm. That's the initial, like, I pop when I, I first did this beer, uh, the ver- the recipe is a little bit different in this aspect, in this uh, particular bottle. But the concept is the same. Uh, I cracked open the, the lid of the fermenter and I'm like, I fucking smell banana. Why do I smell banana in this yeast? And then it aged out to what this is. Okay. You know? Well, that makes sense then. But I'm like, I smell quad. It's not a Belgian style yeast. USO5 is not like a Belgian yeast strain. You know? It's just. But it smells, it smells, you know, know, maltiness, a little bit of caramel. You know what I mean? Like, banana wise, not I get a. I I initially got a little bit of a, a raisin. Kind of smell to it. 
It's yeah. very fruity. Yeah, it's a very fruity bar line. If you're a fruity kind of guy. Mm. He's <laughs> not. But it smells delicious. That's that's the whole point. It's that it smells big, it smells sweet, it smells fruity, it smells super inviting, and it yeah. smells like something I'm gonna drink in about nine seconds. Yeah. Cheers. I'll tell you this. If anything, first thing that pops in my head is that you have mouthfeel down fucking pat. Because it's fucking creamy as fucking... Yeah. It's creamy That's as what I was going for. I mean, that's... That's just... Like... That's textbook mouthfeel for what I want. I mean, it's... Yeah. Beer is subjective. Whatever. But you're talking about... I mean, we... we at least in our bigger, in the bigger beers, there's some styles that I like more than you do. But at least we're we're pretty on par taste with wise. taste wise with these bigger beers. We we both like the same aspects of it, and this is really like that creamy, big, full, yeah. full body. Was yeah. Really, what I was going for with this. It's a massive beer. beer. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. um. Needs to be a little bit sweeter for me. Yeah. That was, I think you said that with the last uh, mm-hmm. barley wine as well. Needs to be a little bit sweeter for me, but it's it's really good. Mm. It has, what's the word I'm looking for? It tastes like a drier almond finish, like a nutty dry finish. Yeah. Which isn't a bad thing, but it's good. I haven't had much of your beers. I had... The original barley wine. Mm. I had a turned IPA. Yeah. You also had a, a grapefruit. A, a double. You had a pine a pineapple. Pineapple. Pale. Sorry. Uh, uh, double. This is the best one out of all the yeah. beers that I've had. You've had the double as well. Which mm-hmm. is yeah, this is way better. I did two barley wines because you did uh, a Maker's Maker's Mark and what uh, else? Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace. Um, this is the best one I've had out of all of them. Um, I think it's just a matter of sweetness. Because I think there's that little bit of... he. T- we talked about this off camera. There's that slightest hint of tartness. A little yeah. bit of sour. Mm. That I think if you just kicked up the sweetness a notch, mm. it would cancel that out. Yeah. And then make it like what I want it to be, not necessarily what it is. Yeah. Which sounds like a negative, but it's totally not. It's just that, that little bit, it, I like tartness in, like, my beer that aren't sour beers. You know what yeah. I mean? So, just that tiniest little bit of sweetness. I think you're just pull, holding back on, your, you think sweetness is, you don't want things to be overly sweet. Um... Is that is that what you feel like? No, what I I I want things at least with with this beer. I wanted it to hit at least a certain percentage. So where I'm where I'm at right now, I calculated this to about ten six, and that was ten was I want it to at least hit ten percent. But your old yeah. goal is fourteen. My ultimate goal was fourteen. But don't you think if you if you uh, it, again I am no way no. If it is in fact ten, then more sugar should be left over, less sugar actually fermented out. Yeah. Well, that was my question. I don't know. I don't know. I know very very infinite basics about brewing. More sugar involved wouldn't that bring uh, the alcohol content up? It would. Um, it all determines. Uh, how much the yeast actually processes. You know, whatever the yeast does, residual sweetness comes from the yeast at a certain point just gets tired and it stops working. So if a beer that doesn't have too much of a starting gravity, uh, too much sugar going in, the yeast will stop working sooner, you know? Actually, that's kind of, that's not exactly right, 
but it will stop working. In most cases. In most casing, cases, it'll ferment out a little bit quicker, and it'll go a little bit faster. But you need more time, and you need more yeast for a bigger beer like this. But my, what my point is, in an ultimate goal, in my eyes, to make this like... Like a crazy awesome beer, not that it's not bad, but mm. or to, not that it's not good, is that it would be a little bit sweeter. Mm. But if let, let's see, if you hit fourteen percent, it would would be sweeter. Um, most likely, most likely it could be a little. So if it had a little bit, a little bit more booziness to it, chances are a little bit sweeter, and then it would have been more to my particular. Yeah, liking. it probably would. Be. And that was what I was trying to hit at: is that if you like. If it was a little bit more sweeter, if you brought it to that point, like got it to the, if it was closer to fourteen than ten. Yeah, it might be what I wanted. Not that what I want is the end all be all. Yeah, but more to what I would want out of it. It would be a little bit sweeter, which would make it when, just whatever. When I was initially gonna bottle this, it was nowhere near the alcohol that I needed it to be. Um, it was closer to like seven or eight percent. I'm like, That's I remember you texting me. You were like, like, I'm kind of worried about this. I'm like, this. Is, I'm, gonna come, I'm gonna let it sit for another week. Capped it back off. Went on vacation. Came back. I'm like, All right. Ten percent. Not bad. This is pretty good. I think I could bottle it at this point to save from like something actually going wrong. You know. Yeah. So, but where I am, like I said, once you get. At, but at the same time, like once you get above ten percent, you're like going all the same. You know? yeah, well, it's it, like, seems, it's, it seems like ten it seems to thirteen like, percent is like this weird arbitrary area mm-hmm. that like it really is. Like if you watch Top Gear, I know you watch it. I've watched it. Like Top Gear, you've seen Top Gear mm-hmm. before, right? It's like they have cars that go up to two hundred miles per hour, but the car that goes from two hundred to two twenty five means like twice as much engine as a car that goes two hundred because. To get from to get from ten to thirteen is infinitely harder to get from five to ten. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's just it's a whole nother ball game. You know, you'll hit you'll hit eight sooner than you'll end at eight sooner than you'll end at thirteen. Yeah. Honestly. Um, and just like the last one I did, again, a little bit more sweetness. Mm-hmm. But in and all in all. It's a really, really good beer. I mean, just like the last one you did, Mount Feels fantastic. I mean, that's 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 a big deal. Like Mount yeah. Feels like a, I feel like that's probably that ball is fumbled way more than actual taste. Like I've tasted good beers that are just like, mm, you know, it just doesn't. It tastes good, but it just yeah. lacks something. Lacks something. And a lot of times that 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 something is Mount Feel, and this is just like. Chewy, chewy, deliciousness. Yeah, and it has a ring on it. Like, look at that. Like, a nice funk ring. Yeah, that's it has a, a funk sign. ring. That that's always a good sign. <laughs> Any time a beer is a funk ring, good things are happening. Yeah. Um, rating wise, uh, barley wine uh, wise, I'd probably give it like a mid eighties, like an eighty five, eighty six. All right. That's what All I right. did. It's probably a little skewed for friendship. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, but it would definitely, without a doubt. It wouldn't be much lower than that. I'm not being that. I shouldn't have said that because it's not true. No. Like it's a. It, it's not hitting like seventies, right? No, not even close. No, mm-hmm. not even close. We did the. It's not the worst beer I had today. In review wise, it's not the best one. Yeah, let's put it that way. Well, um, I love that. It's beautiful though. I mean, you, I mean the, people can't see it, but, like, it's just pretty. It's a pretty beer. Color-wise, body-wise. The, the legs that are sticking to the, the oh, side yeah. of the glass, they're it's sticking more. Creamy, up. creamy deliciousness. Yeah. They're yeah. sticking around longer than the uh, mirror mirrors. No. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Not the old side. Not the old side. That's, <laughs> that's something completely different. But every time I took the glass to drink it, I, I'm just watching, mm-hmm. watching that carbonation cascade down the back of the glass. Yes. And there's, like, I think I said this in a review before the two of us did, that, that goes, 
I'm not trying to toot my own horn by saying this, but that goes like there's two aspects that leave a lacing like this on the glass. On the glass, one of them is a clean glass. This these glasses are not perfectly clean. We've yeah. used them a couple of times. The other is quality of the beer, and I'm not trying to say that my beer is perfect quality, but you know, when you're using a glass a couple of times and you just rinse it out with just plain water, you don't wash it. And this happens? You know. There's proof, a half decent proof beer. Proof is in the pudding. There's a half decent beer in there. Yeah. You know? Half decent. Mm. Um, yeah. So, rating wise, I'd probably give it like a minute 80. So, I'd probably readjust. Let's go 84 to 88. Let's go with that. Um, uh, value wise, it's a 10 because. I've never paid for a Joe beer before, so yes, you, get all you, value beer, wise. you get all these beers for and free. Availability, I'd have to go another ten because honestly, I if I ever <laughs> want one, I can just ask you and you'd probably give me one. Yes, yes. so I, it's I, like.